Hello, in this lecture, we're going to work a problem using a process cost system. So remember, when we use a process cost system, that means that we are producing inventory, we're manufacturing, and when we manufacture, we either generally talk about a job cost system or a process cost system. Job cost system usually has uh, inventory that is different in nature and difference in size and whatnot, so we have to allocate information per job. Process cost means that we usually have very similar type of inventory and therefore we're going to allocate the cost in a process through the process like if we're refining oil or something. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it something like that so process cost system here we're going to calculate the equivalent units at this time so here's our data on the left hand side and we are going to use this data in order to calculate the equivalent units in an excel type worksheet and just thinking about kind of the format of the of the worksheet whether you do it by hand or whether it's in excel is half the challenge like it is for many type of accounting problems just setting up uh, the way this thing should look so we're going to start off calculating uh, the costs that we need to account for during this time period meaning where we allocated the cost obviously in the prior time period we're looking at the current uh, cost that we're going to have to allocate. We're going to use equivalent units in order to do so. So let's think about just dollar amounts first. If we have a uh, beginning work in process, we're going to start and they're going to give us these numbers. These are going to be the dollar amounts. We're not talking units here. So we're going to say the direct materials are 9900 and the conversion are 110970. And therefore the total, if we use our trusty sum function equals SUM brackets of the 9,900 plus the 110,7970, uh, we come up to the 128,7. We're going to add to that the dollar amount that was incurred during the month for direct materials and conversion. Remember that conversion means that uh, it's the stuff that changed the direct material to the end product. So that's going to be things like direct labor uh, uh, and uh, overhead, things that converted the direct material. So that's going to be the 248.4 and the 1082970 for conversion. Once again, we can sum those up, summing these up using the sum function. One, uh, 248.4 plus the 1,082,970 gives us the 1,331,370. We can then sum them up uh, this way as well, having a total column, allocating the total cost. Whoops, need an equal sign there. Equals the sum of the 9009 plus the 2484 tab equals the sum of the 110970 plus the 1082970 tab equals the sum of the 12870 and the 1,331,370 and enter and of course it should also add up this way as well 1,452,240 uh, is our total now and that's pretty straightforward. We know what the costs are in terms of the dollar amount. What we don't know really is how to, to uh, allocate those costs between these two departments. We're assuming that department A happens to port before department B. So we have to do something like packaging or, you know, a production before the packaging department and something like that. So we have to allocate the items to A department uh, and then it goes through A department. And then we're going to take that inventory, that work in process, apply it to the second process, that process being B similar to uh, production if we're if we're making uh, something we're going to do the do the production of the item and then maybe the packaging of the item next we're going to move from talking about dollar amounts at this point to talking about unit amounts and we're going to use the two of these of course to calculate the cost uh, for equivalent units so we're moving to uh, units and note we're going to basically have a calculation like this that we got to just kind of memorize and, th and think through whenever we do this type of problem where we want to break this out into the format of beginning units that we have plus those units started and completed and then minus the ending uh, units and I mean plus the total ending units gives us the total units available. Now I'll explain why we need to break that out in this way as we go and that's what we will be putting in here. So we're going to say that the 3,000 
beginning inventory in units is given to us here. So we have units 3000, those are in process. So again, if, uh, if, they're, if they're in the processing part, they're already in there in, in this month. They're already in the work in process, in the processing. What has not happened yet is the conversion, the labor and the overhead in order to process those raw materials to finished goods. So in terms of the raw material, when we think about a FIFO method, we're generally gonna say that we're, we're not gonna have any uh, conversion or any cost related to the material that's already in the process at the beginning. That's going to be a usual assumption under FIFO because uh, all the material went in there last time. The only thing that's lacking in the process is going to be the direct labor and the overhead. Therefore, the amount of cost that we're going to allocate of this additional cost is not going to be included because um, all that material cost went in there prior, before. So we're going to say, of course, then the 3,000 units times zero is going to be nothing for this month, this period, whatever this period may be. And then on the conversion side, it says that the beginning work in process from last month that's already in process has 40% complete. So how complete is it? I mean, what are we going to have to do to it this time in terms of labor and overhead? We're going to have to say one minus 40% and it's going to have to be 60%. So if it was 40% complete last time, and it's a first in first out, we're going to finish whatever's still in there this time. And therefore we're going to have to do the other 60%. So of these 3000 total units we're accounting for equivalent units, we're going to take times 60% is going to be that, uh, 1,800 equivalent units. So then we're going to have to calculate the units that are started and completed. Now, the reason we want to do this is because of course, if they started it and completed it, then the equivalent units are going to be 100% both for materials and conversion. That's why we want to break this out in this kind of funny calculation we haven't really worked with too much before and break out the amount that are started and completed for this equivalent unit calculation. We can do that in this case by saying, okay, here's the amount that was completed. Uh, the com units completed and transferred out 22,200. And we're going to assume minus the, the ones that were, th those 22,200 includes the beginning inventory because we're assuming FIFO so if it, it was in there at the beginning that that's part of the units that were transferred out therefore that minus the 3000 means that the amount that was started and completed this time is the 19200 and if it was started and completed then 100% of the materials went in this time so we're going to say the 19200 times 100% equivalent units are the same same with conversion we completely con uh, finish the conversion problem process. So 19,200 times hundred percent. That's why we do the started and completed. And then we're going to have the stuff that's still in there. It's still in the processing department at the end of the time period. So we're going to say that that's going to be this uh, given to us in this 2,400 still in work in process, 2,400. And they're going to have to tell us, well, how converted are those? We started them. We put them into the process now, and we haven't yet finished them. How finished are they? Problem's going to have to give us a number on that. And they're going to say, okay, it's 40% complete. But that 40% complete is going to be allocated to the conversion part of it. Because remember that we don't really need to have any number to tell us how complete it was in terms of material. Because the usual assumption for these when we talk about first in, first out is that all the materials went in the process. So 100% of the materials are kind of assumed for most problems that went in the process. The only thing that hasn't happened is we haven't finished converting those materials using direct labor, using the overhead to produce the finished inventory. So we're going to say that for materials, the 2004 times 100%, they are uh, total the same. As far as conversion, the conversion of those direct materials, they're only 80% complete. So for equivalent units for the, for the conversion, we've got the 2004 times the 80%. And that's going to be only uh, 1920. So if we sum these up, then we're going to say sum of, we've got the 3000 units plus the 19 started and completed plus the ending. Those are the units that we're going to have to allocate out in terms of the cost that we had during this time period. And in terms of equivalent units for materials, we're summing up none of the beginning because those were all in there last time. All of the ones that are started and completed and all of the ones that, that uh, were started and not completed are going to be in there. And then in terms of the conversion equivalent units equals the sum of the uh, uh, 1008, the, the stuff we finished in the beginning, plus
plus of course all of that was started and completed and this and the portion of the stuff that's not yet done in the end so note what we have here we've got the total units in terms of total units we need to account for when we talk about equivalent units we're talking about equivalent units in terms of either materials or conversion that's why we have two of them it's not like we have added these up and we have 44 520 equivalent units no we have equivalent units related to materials of 21.6 always going to be equal to or less than the total units and we have equivalent units in terms of conversion of 22 920 always of course being equal to or less than the total units that we are going to account for now that we have the total dollar amounts and the equivalent units we can calculate uh, the cost per equivalent unit here and before I do that, I just want to point out that uh, in order to do any of these problems, again, they're going to be very similar in nature, just like many accounting problems. And if you memorize just kind of this table, whether you write it by hand in, in a test format or uh, do it in Excel or something like that, you, you want to basically be able to put this table into place. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to take the uh, cost incurred this period in terms of dollar amounts divided by the equivalent units. So the cost of this period just remember you're taking the cost that was incurred this period, not the total cost because we're, we're, we're allocating the cost that were incurred during this time. So we're going to say that's going to be the materials 248.4. And for the conversion, we're talking about the dollar amount cost is going to be the 1,082,970 for conversion. And then we're going to divide that by equivalent units. So for materials, we had the 21.6 equivalent units and for uh, the conversion we had the 22.9. So we may even want to put the dollar signs here. So if we, this is going to be dollars, this is going to be dollars. I'm going to format, right click, and go to format cells and make it uh, maybe currency and add the add the dollar and take off the decimals. So so this is units. These are dollars. So this is the current dollar amount divided by the units is going to give us the cost per uh, unit. The cost per equivalent unit we should say that's going to be the 248.4 divided by the 21,006 gives us 12 if i go to the home tab numbers and add decimals uh not that many decimals we got to 1150. let's do the same thing here we're going to say we're going to take the uh 1,082,970 divided by the 22,920 and once again go to the home tab numbers add decimals and we get the 4725. Those are uh, rounded numbers, so uh, you know, obviously we could be different by pennies, you could have some rounding differences. Okay, so now that we have that then, <laughs> we can go to our uh, this type of calculation out here, the total cost accounted for, and try to see, okay, how much of the cost this period are we gonna allocate to the current production? And remember what we're doing, we're in production A, and how much got transferred out to the next cycle. So kind of like if we're producing something and then it goes from one department to like the packaging department. We made something and then we're gonna package something or something in a process system like that. So now that we have our equivalent units, we're gonna come down here, we're gonna say, let's take our beginning number in terms of total cost in work and process, that's gonna equal total cost uh, given here. So we've got the total cost and then we're going to be allocating the cost to uh, beginning inventory and again you want to learn basically this format how to set up this format of table uh, when you when you're working these problems now note that this table is going to be similar to this table we're going to be drawing data from this table down here and putting it into here so we're, we're trying to uh, calculate out the cost per equivalent unit and we're going to need the units and we're going to need the cost per equivalent units so we're talking about the cost at the beginning inventory we've got the direct materials and we're going to use the equivalent units i'm going to say where does this number come from it's going to be up here and and we're talking about material so it's this number here remember equivalent units was zero and therefore if we pull out the rest of the calculation zero equivalent units times whatever the cost per equivalent unit was which is of course 1150 will result in zero times the 1150 or of course zero when we talk about the conversion for the beginning inventory, see, we're going to go back to this table. I'm going to say this equals the equivalent unit table for the materials. And I'm sorry, for the conversion in this case, the beginning for the conversion. And that's going to be this uh, 1008. And then we're going to get the uh, cost per equivalent unit from our cost per equivalent unit table, which is, of course, this 4725 tab. And then if we multiply that out, we're going to say, okay, we have 1008 
times the 4725, that gives us the 8550. Uh, so therefore the total cost to complete the beginning inventory in terms of both the uh, direct materials and, and conversion is going to equal the sum of the zero and the 85,050. Uh, now we're going to do the same thing for, for the next one on this table. So we just basically did this piece of it. And I'm just, I'll make that green. We'll say we did that. And now we're going to move down and we're going to do this piece similar fashion down here and uh, do our similar calculations. So once again, we've got the direct materials and conversion for um, cost of units started and completed. So I'm going to say this equals, and we're going to go back up to our equivalent units table, the 19,002 tab. Oh, sorry. I'm going to go back up here. For the direct materials, it's going to be the same, but it's going to be the materials here. That's this number here, tab. And then we're going to get the number for the materials for the uh, cost per equivalent unit, 1150 tab. Multiply that out. So this is the number of units for materials that we started and completed and it's 11.5, 1150 per unit. Conversion, same thing. We're gonna say this equals, we're gonna to go to our units table. So we're on this one, we're on the conversion here, 19.2, cause they all started and completed, same number, cause they were started and uh, completed. And then the cost per unit, the 47.25, if we multiply that out, then we get the 19.200 times the conversion per equivalent unit, and that gives us the 907.200. Let's sum that up, summing up the, the cost of units started and completed then being the sum of these here. So then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back up here and say, okay, we found a home for this one. And then we're gonna do a similar calculation, of course, for the last one, for the ending work in process here. And before we do that, let's clean up some subtotals that we have. So we have a subtotal here that's gonna say the total cost of units at the beginning inventory. So remember, we're talking about the work in process that's still in department A and the units that were in there at the beginning allocating the cost. That cost that's already in there is the stuff that happened last time, like last month, the 120,870 in terms of dollars that was given to us way up here at the beginning. That's what's in the working process at the beginning. Then we allocated another 8550 to those units that were in process at the beginning. Therefore, if we add these two up, we're gonna say the sum of what was already in the working process, plus the stuff that we allocated, the dollar amount we allocated to those units that were in process at the beginning, means that we have 205,920 there. Then, we have this subtotal down here, total cost of units transferred out, meaning they're going out from the department we are looking at, department A, going to department B, kind of like if we were producing something and then it goes out of the production department to the packaging department. So, that means, that under a FIFO method, everything that was in there at the beginning, this whole 205,920, we're talking dollars now, of the units that were in there at the beginning, the dollar amount applied to those units, plus everything that of course was started and completed, that's the dollar amount that we need to take out of department A and move to department B. So this is gonna be the sum of, we're just gonna add up the 205,920 dollars allocated to the beginning units, plus the 1,128,000, dollars dollars allocated to the unit started and completed. This is the amount going out from the department A we're looking at to the next department, department B. Now we're going to figure out what is still left in department A that has not yet gone out to department B in terms of dollar amounts. We're going to use, of course, a similar calculation. Direct materials is going to be here. We're going to look at the equivalent units. I'm going to say this equals and scroll up to our equivalent units in terms of materials. So here's the ending materials. Uh, two, four, of course, all of those are in there because we started it and that's the first thing we do when we start the new thing and we're going to say cost per equivalent units for materials. We're going to equals, that's this 1150 we calculated tab and then we're going to multiply that out. So this equals the 2004 times the $11.50 gives us the 2760, I'm sorry, 27,600. And then we're going to say this equals the conversion side of it. Same type of thing. We're going to say the equivalent units for conversion and ending inventory is going to be this 80% complete or the 1,920. And the equivalent, uh, the cost per equivalent unit is this 47.25 we calculated. Therefore, we're going to say that this equals the equivalent units 1,920 times 
the 4725 gives us the 90,270. If we sum those up, equals the sum of the 27,600 plus the 90,700. That gives us the 118, uh, 118,320. Now this last number is just basically a check figure. So what we're doing is we're just going to say this equals the sum of the, the total amount that's going to be transferred out plus the amount that's still in the work in process for department A. That gives us the 1,045,240. Why is that a check figure? Because that should match what we calculated up top in terms of total cost. The 1,042,240, the 1,042,240. So we allocated this total cost, including what was in work in process and that amount that um, was added during the process. Instead of breaking it out this way, we have now breaking it out to the amount that needs to be uh, transferred from the department A to the amount that's still in there in uh, the work in process for A. So if we did that, we could take a look at our journal entry over here and see what would the journal entry look like. If we had a trial balance, it might look something like this. We just put, I just made up some numbers here. So we got the assets here. We have this amount in the work in, uh, work in process for A because that of course is the beginning plus all the uh, costs for that time period. And the idea of course that being that we have to take it out of department A and put it into department B for the amount that was completed through the production process that's now going to like the second process, possibly to a, to a packaging department or something like that. Of course, we're in balance here and we can make this journal entry. So all it's doing is going from one uh, asset account to another asset account, that asset account being of course, inventory type of counts of work in process. So it's gonna go into B, so I'm gonna copy B, that's gonna be the debit and paste it one, two, three. And the amount then is gonna be equal to, and if we gotta go scroll back over here, I'm scrolling down to my table, and we're gonna take this number here. Why that number? Because that's the amount, the cost that were transferred out. And once we take that out, we'll be left with this number, the 118,320. So we're gonna take this, and that's gonna be the debit and the credit, and we're going to take it out of depart work in process for A. So I'm gonna right click and paste it one, two, three. Then if we were to post this to see what this does to an actual kind of trial balance here, we would say that uh, here, we're gonna say this equals the uh, this debit. And now of course work in process goes up for B, like the packaging department we're gonna say, and then work in process for A, what's still in there, we're gonna take out this amount with the credit and that leaves us that ending balance on our worksheet, the 118,320. Of course, there's no effect on the income statement for this process because we're only uh, allocating the asset through our production process at this point. It will affect the income statement in the form of cost of goods sold when we finally sell our inventory. But of course, it's going to have to go from B to finished goods, then finished goods to cost of goods sold.